America's booming CBD market received a cold splash of reality this week when the U.S. Food and Drug Administration issued a letter to Cureleaf, a major U.S. cannabis and CBD brand, warning that some of its product marketing violates the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act. Reaction from vendors and investors was swift and harsh. And in 24 hours, the national drugstore chain CVS announced it would remove some of Cureleaf CBD products from its shelves. Shares of Cureleaf stock fell 8% in a day. All that happened because of a single warning letter, not a product recall, a tainted batch, or an expose on 60 Minutes. It's worth nothing that the FDA did not warn that Cureleaf's products themselves were illegal. Rather, it was the way in which Cureleaf marketed the products. The FDA currently has nothing to say about the legality or the illegality of cannabis oil. That may change. The agency has fast-tracked a review of CBD products, held a widely seen public hearing on the substance at the end of May, and many are expecting FDA officials to announce some sort of regulatory action by the end of 2019. The FDA has made one thing very clear about CBD, however. The agency will not tolerate manufacturers making pharmaceutical-like claims about the product. If you claim your product will heal cancer or alleviate pain, and it is not an FDA-approved drug, the agency will come knocking at your door. The Curely file wasn't even a heavy lift for the FDA. According to the warning letter, an agency official simply went to Curely's website and took notes on the phrases posted. Here are a couple of the phrases that got the company into trouble. For chronic pain, on the page for the company's relief brand CBD disposable vape, vape pen. Soothing tincture for chronic pain, on the page for relief CBD tincture. The FDA also objected to Cureleaf posting basic health claims about CBD on pages unrelated to products. Some of the most common reasons to use CBD oil include chronic pain, medical conditions like anxiety, depression, and PTSD. While there are studies and anecdotal evidence indicating that CBD may help some patients suffering those from conditions, it's not accurate to claim that CBD can cure or offer quick relief from all those maladies with just a dose. That's not to say CBD is ineffective in all cases. It means there's more complexity involved. Curative isn't trying to peddle snake oil. It looked like the company's marketing and brand design team outkicked their legal coverage while trying to condense complicated information into bite-sized phrases that fit into a tweet or on a web page. But at the same time, the FDA hasn't exactly been hiding their prickliness over health claims made for CBD. Arizona Attorney General Mark Bernovich approved a trial program allowing digital payments to medical marijuana dispensaries, which could significantly impact the way the state's MMJ firms without banking service transact businesses in the future. Bernovich noted in a news release that Arizona startup Ulta will allow cash-intensive businesses to make and receive digital payments without a bank. Ulta is a private financial services club that provides digital currency for licensed medical cannabis providers and vendors. Here's what you need to know. Ulta's digital tokens allow members to safely transfer cash, according to the company. Tokens can be redeemed for cash. Instead of cash, members can pay each other using a proprietary blockchain-based digital currency. Smartphone or computers are used to access the exchange and complete transaction. The tokens never change in value. One token equals one dollar. More than a dozen public pension funds are investing in marijuana through a California real estate investment trust, a sign that institutional investors wielding billions of dollars in state funds are comfortable pumping money into the cannabis industry. The public pension funds for government employees represent a broad range of states, from California, where, mar where marijuana is legally both medically and recreationally, to states where it is legal only medically, such as Louisiana. In total, at least 16 state pension funds in the United States and one in Canada are investing in San Diego-based in innovative industrial proprietors, which leases properties to licensed medical cannabis operators, according to the Chicago Sun-Times. The New York State Common Retirement Fund, California State Teachers Retirement System, and the Texas Permanent School Fund. One of the funds is from Tennessee, even though that state's governor, Bill Lee, has routinely opposed any move to legalize even medical marijuana. 
The report highlights the increasing involvement of institutional investment in the U.S. cannabis sector. Ontario Canada-based licensed producer Can Trust fired its chief executive Peter Aceto with calls Thursday amid an ongoing scandal involving unlicensed cannabis cultivation that has enveloped the marijuana industry in Canada for weeks. The company also demanded and received the resignation of its longtime chairman, Eric Paul. The investigation onto the company's non-compliance with Health Canada regulations and ancillary matters uncovered new information that has resulted in determination by the board to terminate with cause Cantrust CEO Aceto, Cantrust said in a statement. Earlier this month, Cantrust greenhouse facility in Pelham, Ontario, received a non-compliant rating after a whistleblower alerted Canada's cannabis regulator to five unlicensed cultivation rooms the company had been operating since late 2018. That forced the company to halt some and eventually all sales pending further investigation. Cantrust was also found to have shipped some of the unlicensed cannabis to Denmark and Australia, which could cause broader problems for Canada's producers if countries end up curbing imports from Canada. The company did not say what new information it uncovered, but the Globe and Mail reported that Aceto and Paul had been aware of the unlicensed cannabis cultivation as early as November, citing internal company communications. Industry sources said the executive shakeup is long overdue. Pennsylvania regulators revoked the permit of one of the state's medical cannabis cultivators for allegedly violating production and security regulations. The action against Agrimed Industries comes roughly a month after a surprise state inspection found numerous violations that raised concerns that some plants may have been diverted to the illicit market, according to the Philadelphia Inquirer. Agrimed, which has 30 days to appeal the state's decision, reportedly entered into a management service agreement recently with Arizona-based Harvest. Under the cease and desist order, Acromed was permitted to continue to grow plants to cultivate its strains. However, the company was prohibited from removing anything from the plants without a department inspector on hand and was not permitted to deactivate its security equipment. New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo's desire for full legislation of cannabis took a step closer this week as marijuana use was decriminalized. It means possession of small amounts of weed punishable by imprisonment until Monday, will now be subject to discretionary fines. The state has been slowly chipping away at strict marijuana laws, and this latest move paves the way for future legislation. Although obviously disappointed not to have statewide full backing, Cuomo said the current position would allow putting in place measures that would clear the records of those with criminal convictions as a result of possession of small amounts of marijuana. New York State becomes the 15th to pass a decriminalized bill, while 11 states and the District of Columbia have given the green light to recreational use of cannabis. Between 2008 and 2017, more than 360,000 people were arrested for marijuana possession in New York State. Turning over the resulting convictions is one of the Democrats' main priorities. London's first municipal cannabis clinic to offer cannabis medicine to children will open this week. The Sapphire Medical Clinic in Harley Street announced it can be prescribed medicinal cannabis for all conditions acknowledged to benefit from it. Patients can be described medicinal cannabis by specialist doctors in the UK as of November 2018. Sapphire pain specialist Dr. Michael Pratt told the Evening Standard they were conscious of controversy around cannabis products with THC, but there is anecdotal evidence it has a strong positive impact on the children concerned. UK medical experts now have the option to legally issue prescriptions for cannabis-based medicines if they think it could help their patient. The UK law change came soon after the highly publicised case of severely epileptic teenager Billy Coldwell. The boy fell ill when the UK Home Office confiscated cannabis oil he had been prescribed abroad. His mother said his condition improved thanks to cannabis oil treatments. They must make decisions on prescribing cannabis-based products for municipal use on a case-by-case -case basis, and only when the patient has a special clinical need that is not met by licensed products. The new law will not limit the types of conditions that can be considered for treatment, and doctors will no longer need to seek approval from an expert panel for patients to access the medicines.